How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in this video I'm going to be showing you from start to finish how to set up and use G-Sync or FreeSync depending on which is available to you and the best settings to use inside all of your games to get the absolute best gameplay experience possible and the best experience from utilizing G-Sync or FreeSync. Doesn't matter if you're on a high-end system, low-end system, in this video we're going to be covering the game settings, control panel settings and monitor settings you need to have set up. We won't be diving super deep into the intricacies of how this technology works. In this video we're going to be focusing on the individual settings that you need to set quickly and easily just to be set up and utilizing FreeSync or G-Sync on your system and enjoying the gameplay experience that comes with that. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. Please make sure that you do follow along with as many steps with inside of this video as possible. Don't just watch a few of them and then carry on on your own because it's essential that you have all of these settings set up to work together to ensure that you do get the best experience possible. First of all, you need to tackle the monitor settings. To ensure that variable refresh rate tech has been enabled on your display, you need to navigate over to the side, the back, or the bottom of your monitor to the small buttons which will allow you to get into the monitor settings. We want to head over to the main options with inside of the monitor where we should be able to find anything labeled VRR, AMD FreeSync, or Adaptive Sync. On this display in which I'm utilizing right now, it's labeled as adaptive sync or even just variable refresh rate. Whatever your display labels this setting as, make sure that this has been turned on. Also very important to make sure that we're utilizing the highest refresh rate possible before setting this up. Right click on your desktop, head over to display settings. Select your main display for your system, for me that's number two. Scroll down towards the bottom to advanced display. Then go down to the bottom of this to choose a refresh rate. Go to the drop down menu and set the highest refresh rate possible for your system. It's now time to jump into the NVIDIA control panel or Radeon control panel to go through all of the settings you need to be making use of. We'll first of all start off with the NVIDIA users, but for those of you utilizing an AMD Radeon GPU, head to the timestamp on screen now to go to your exact settings you need to be setting up on a Radeon GPU. So for NVIDIA users, start by right clicking on your desktop, navigating down to show more options and selecting NVIDIA control panel. We can first of all start off with the basic setting of heading to the left hand side to set up G-Sync. If this panel does not show up on your display, this will more than likely be due to you not having VRR or FreeSync compatible mode or whatever it's labeled as on your monitor hasn't been set up properly. Go back into your monitor setting and double check that anything to do with adaptive sync, variable refresh rate, free sync or G-Sync has been enabled. You first of all want to select the monitor you're going to be turning this on for. Head up to the top to enable G-Sync slash G-Sync compatible. You'll then have two options available to you. Enable for full screen and enable for windowed and full screen. For those of you that play most of your games in full screen, full screen mode could give the best results. But for those of you that play DirectX 12 games, games in windowed mode, borderless windowed, for the overall widest compatibility, I would recommend setting this up for windowed and full screen mode as well. Bear in mind though that this this option can be slightly buggy, especially for those of you that edit or utilize other 3D accelerated applications on your system that aren't games. So if you do notice any small flickering on apps, change this back over to just full screen mode, go to the bottom and select apply. Head up to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview. Ensure the middle option for use the advanced 3D settings has been selected, go to the bottom and select apply. Once that's done, go to the left hand side to manage 3D settings. We're then going to head over to the global settings panel because we're going to be setting most of these up for all games and applications across the system. So we will be going with global. First option we need to change is down towards the bottom and it'll be labeled monitor technology. Make sure that this has been set up to G-Sync or G-Sync compatible depending on what's available to you. Scroll down once again, go to preferred refresh rate and change this to highest available. We can scroll down towards the bottom to vertical sync. Go to the option for this, we're then going to be switching this on. You're more than likely wondering why we're turning vertical sync on, but it's completely normal. Pairing G-Sync with V-Sync with inside of the control panel will give you the absolute best results possible and the lowest input latency. It sounds counterproductive, but V-Sync behaves slightly differently when paired with G-Sync and they're both running together. Last but not least, we'll then scroll up towards the top to the low latency mode. Setting low latency mode to ultra when utilizing G-Sync and V-Sync will cap your FPS with inside of games just under your monitor's maximum refresh rate, keeping you inside of the G-Sync window, which is what we want permanently. So at this point, we should have enabled G-Sync on the left-hand side, have our monitor technology set to G-Sync with inside of the 3D settings, have low latency mode set to ultra, and vertical sync has been enabled in the 3D control panel settings as well. At that point, go to the bottom right and select apply. That's it for the NVIDIA control panel settings. I'm quickly going to be covering the exact same settings but for AMD Radeon users, so make sure that you skip to the timestamp on screen now to jump to the game settings you need to be making use of. First of all, take yourself to the desktop, right click and open the AMD software, take yourself over to the gaming section, then go towards the bottom where it says looking for global graphics, go inside of global display. You need to first of all start off by enabling AMD FreeSync technology. In some cases, this may not be labeled as AMD FreeSync, it might be labeled as adaptive sync or adaptive variable refresh rate or something along those lines, just enable that technology. 
strategy. We can then take ourselves over from the display tab over to graphics. We then need to navigate down to the bottom left hand side to where it says wait for vertical refresh. Go to the drop down menu and set this to always on. We're utilizing these settings because vSync and FreeSync used together work differently than just vSync on its own. And when set up correctly with inside of your game, you won't notice any of the input latency penalties from utilizing vSync and you'll have the absolute smoothest and best gameplay experience possible. Another option you can feel free to experiment around utilizing with this setup is AMD's Radeon Anti-Lag. Anti-Lag in theory works very similarly to Nvidia's Reflex technology which you may have seen floating around. Drastically reduce input latency especially when GPU usage is higher. This in theory should work fantastically with this FreeSync setup but in some games Anti-Lag can cause some stutter so it's not really recommended on a completely system wide basis but if you'd like to give it a go by all means enable this. With everything set up and out of the way we can then jump into one of our favorite games to go through the in-game settings you need to utilize alongside the control panel settings we've now set up for the lowest input latency experience possible when utilizing a G-Sync or FreeSync setup. Jump into one of your favorite games, head inside of the in-game options menu, and we can start with the display mode. Ensure that you're utilizing full screen or exclusive full screen mode where available at all times. If you must use a borderless mode, then go with borderless windowed. We'll next be finding the V-Sync option listed inside of our game. Make sure that this has been switched to the off position. Even though we have enabled it inside of the control panel, we need it turned off in-game. If you have an option for double buffering or triple buffering, make sure that either of these options or both have been disabled. If you are on an Nvidia GPU and your game has the Nvidia Reflex option, make sure that you do utilize this at least on the enabled setting, if not enabled plus boost for a slight FPS improvement as this will keep GPU clocks running higher for longer. Just make sure that you are always utilizing Reflex in any game that supports it. Last but not least, for those of you on Radeon FreeSync setup, you will need to utilize the built-in frame limiting option inside of any of your favorite games. When utilizing a G-Sync or FreeSync setup, you'll actually get the lowest level of input latency utilizing the built-in FPS cap method in your game's engine. So jump into your game settings, find the FPS cap method. You then want to manually set an FPS cap of 3 to 7 FPS lower than your monitor's maximum refresh rate. For me, I'm on a 160 hertz panel, so I'm going to cap my FPS at 153 as that's 7 FPS lower, and that will ensure that we are always within the G-Sync or FreeSync window. If you're on a 144 hertz panel, you could go with an FPS cap of 141, 240 hertz panel, 237. For those of you on NVIDIA GPUs and you've set up ultra low latency mode, you shouldn't have to cap your in-game FPS as either NVIDIA Reflex or ultra low latency mode should be doing this for you. If for some reason your FPS still remains uncapped, you will also need to utilize the built-in FPS cap limit in your individual game settings. Again, just set this to anywhere from 3 to 7 FPS lower than your monitor's maximum refresh rate. But if ultra low latency or reflex is already capping your in-game FPS, make sure that you set your in-game FPS limit to zero or as high as possible as we don't want to be stacking up on FPS caps because that's when you can run into weird frame pacing bugs. So only utilize one method to cap your in-game FPS at any time. And just to make sure that you have everything dialed in completely, go to your resolution settings, utilize the native resolution for your monitor unless you're using a custom setup, and most importantly, ensure that the game is utilizing the highest refresh rate possible. Like here on Overwatch 2, it says in bracket 160, which is my highest refresh rate, so I'm going to be utilizing that option. Or if your game has an individual refresh rate setting, make sure it's set to the highest possible. And there you have it, the absolute best possible silky smooth gameplay utilizing a proper G-Sync or FreeSync setup with the absolute lowest latency possible. For those of you utilizing Windows 11, there are a few last settings I would definitely make sure that you have enabled just to get the best experience possible. Take yourself to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, type in GPU space settings. Select the graphics settings panel with inside of here. Navigate to the top to default settings, then select change default graphics settings. Make sure that variable refresh rate has been enabled in the middle. If your GPU supports it, I would also recommend enabling hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. And another setting brand new for Windows 11 is the optimizations for windowed games. This is super useful even if you don't play your games in windowed mode, but with the rise of DirectX 12 being implemented on many PC titles, DirectX 12 technically does run in a window, but it's just borderless windowed. So I'd recommend enabling this option as well if it's available to you. If for some reason you feel like G-Sync isn't actually being enabled properly on your setup, there are a few debugging steps in which we can take to double check that everything is actually running properly. First of all, it is highly recommended to enable the G-Sync indicator instead of the NVIDIA control panel by heading over to the display options, then going to the top to display, ticking the box, rebooting your game, and seeing if the G-Sync enabled overlay appears in the top right hand side. If it doesn't, or you still suspect that G-Sync isn't running properly, I would recommend actually restoring your NVIDIA control panel back to stock settings because in some scenarios you could have had some custom settings set up in the background which might be disabling G-Sync. Re-enable all of the settings shown in this video after doing that, apply it to your game, jump back in and see how it is. Last but not least, if you are still pretty sure G-Sync isn't running, I would highly recommend downloading and utilizing the NVIDIA Profile Inspector tool where you can go through all of the individual G-Sync options in the back end and make sure that they have been enabled and set up properly. Apply that, restart your system, you should then be good to go. And here's an example of Apex Legends completely set up with a proper G-Sync plus V-Sync setup where ultra
ultra low latency mode is managing the FPS cap. It's extremely silky smooth and very consistent and extremely low input latency. Not only is it improving the consistency of the gameplay experience, but it's also saving my CPU and GPU from being run as hard, producing less heat and drawing less power. So everything is just running way more efficiently. If for any particular reason you decide you don't want to run with VSync, it isn't 100% necessary, it's just recommended. So you may see better results turning VSync off in this scenario and keeping all of the rest of the settings. Zero chance of any screen tearing, you will want to utilize VSync, but for some of you looking to prioritize latency, so don't be afraid to experiment around with VSync on or off in the control panel to see which works best for you. And there you guys have it. If you've just set up FreeSync or G-Sync for the first time, let me know of your initial impressions in that comment section down below. If you'd like to see more content like this on how to set up things or system-wide optimizations, consider checking out one of the two videos on screen now, and I'll see you guys over there.